जी सलामकुम शासन हेलो जी सलामकुम आई एम रियली सॉरी टेक्नोलॉजी इशूज इमीजिएटली अचानक रल हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर हेयर चेक के तासो सुमर कसान दे नूर कसान अवेलेबल दी सर उस कन नूर इनसे कसान भी सर ओके ओरिजिनली सुमर हुआ सर मख के सदाट वो उस लगा रो रो डिस्कनेक्ट की दुकान से ग्रुप के मैसेज को मा करना सी सर ऑनलाइन शो सर आ तासो तू है बस ऑनलाइन शे खैर शॉर्ट क्लास पे वालो हो जिस तरह से फोन डिस्कस कर दे ना राइट ओके सर ओके सर ओके जब इन द मीन टाइम्स सो सीजन ऑफ अपलोड का मतलब सो लग आई द मैसेज ओके खैर थैंक यू ओके सर द ग्रुप के मैसेज कॉम सर ऑलराइट ओके थैंक यू सर ऑलमोस्ट पार्टिसिपेंट्स जी कम दिया का टेन शू सर वो चाप आके इग्नालेज हम उनको करना चाहिए ओके सर ओके ओके बस वी विल जस्ट स्टार्ट राइट इन द मीन टाइम जस्ट जस्ट ओपन स्टेटर वी विल जस्ट यूज डायरेक्टली स्टेटर तो सो ओपन के एंड वी विल स्टार्ट
All right. Uh, Salaam alaikum to everyone. Uh, we will formally start. Uh, uh, are you able to uh, hear my voice? Uh, there are confirm kar de ke, is it okay? G? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, so the first topic that uh, we will be considering immediately is what we call heterostaticity. In a sense, today's lecture would be the last lecture in what we call time, uh, sorry, uh, cross-sectional econometrics. Uh, from the next lecture, we would start time series econometrics. So uh, one of the last important topic in this particular category is what we call heterostaticity. Uh, excuse me, sir. G, G, G. سر یہ لاسٹ جو ملٹی کولینیورٹی ہم نے اسٹاپ کیا تھا تو اس میں تو وہ پرابلم ہم نے نہیں پڑھا کہ ہم پھر اس کو پریکٹیکلی کس طرح اور کم کریں گے اوکے اوکے ایک تو ہم نے اس کا سلوشن میرے خیال دیکھا تھا کہ جی جی سلوشن تک وہ تو صرف ہم نے پڑھا تھا کہ یہ یہ سلوشن ہے مطلب اگر سٹیٹسٹیکلی اگر سٹیٹا پہ یا پریکٹیکلی ہم کس طرح اس کو پھر سالف کریں گے Okay, okay, okay. Let's discuss that. Okay, right. Uh, so, for example, if we just open up uh, the same data set, chale uh, ye already available hai, auto data set. Okay, and we fit a model. Uh, suppose a multiple regression model. Uh, taking some of the variables from here. Okay. So this is a multiple regression model. Ek to aap sab ko clear hai ke multi coronarity is an issue of multiple regression model. As long as there are two or more explanatory variables in your model, only then uh, you should be worried about multi coronarity. It doesn't make any problem when you are having only one explanatory variable in your model. Like in real life, you know, it would be very rare to have just one uh, explanatory variable in your model. So that's why you should always be ready for the problem of multi-coordinality. The second thing that you should remember, unfortunately, no model is totally free from multi-coordinality. As long as there are uh, two or more, uh, let me, uh, use uh, the other facility so that I can uh, tell you something through that. Okay, you see, uh, as long as there are more than one explanatory variables, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight explanatory variables, which are mentioned over here, as long as there are more than one explanatory variable in your model, uh, you cannot guarantee that they will all be uncorrelated. So ideal to is they should be uncorrelated, but practically there would be some sort of correlation. So therefore, regarding multicoronality, you should remember that multicoronality is not the problem of presence or absence. It is just the problem of degree, which means severity. Is it severe or is it not severe? Right? So unfortunately, no model is free from multi coronarity So it's only a question whether this is dangerous or whether it is not dangerous. So once you fit a model like this, you cannot say whether this model is uh, suffering from the severe case of multi coronarity or not, right? So what you do, you just uh, type VIF after fitting the model and you get uh, something like this, okay? And then if you look at the first two numbers over here, then it tells you that there are two variables in this model. One is the weight, the other one is the length, which uh, has a VIF more than 10, right? So if VIF, is greater than 10, then you should be worried about the problem of multicoinority. So all these things are okay. 
right? But these two are more than 10, which means that these are the two explanatory variables in your model, which is actually giving you the thing. So therefore, uh, when you give the VIF command, you have determined that we are, uh, Monte Coronati is there. The next thing is uh, what to do with Monte Coronati, okay? What to do with Monte Coronati. So there are different solutions, which uh, I don't know whether we have discussed in the last lecture or yes, not. Yes, sir, go, go discuss with it, sir, discuss with you. Okay, so the first thing was dropping the first thing was that you should drop the high collinear variable. Or if I could yes, remember yes. correctly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, for example, one simple solution would be to drop all the highly collinear variables like weight and length, but it may not be a sensible approach. So let us drop one and keep the other one in the model. And we, at the end of our discussion, uh, we arrived at the conclusion that maybe you should keep weight, right? And drop length. So therefore, uh, for example, when you just drop this variable length from the model, right? When you fit the model without length and then, uh, sorry. So then when you check the VIF, right? So then you come to the conclusion that all the VIF now are actually in the desirable range because as you can see here, weight which was previously more than 10 is now in the desirable range. So it to ye hai, ke dropping one or more of the highly collinear variable. But as we have already discussed in the last lecture, this may not always be a sensible solution because ho sakta hai ke drop karne se aapka multi coronary ka issue to solve ho jaye but maybe uh, other problems can come into your model wo bahut sare issues hain so therefore what are the alternatives the alternative is uh, number 1 uh, which would be solution number 2 increase the sample size okay ye humne discuss kiya tha Yes, sir. We discussed it. Achha. Increase the sample size. Increase the sample size means uh, that, for example, if you have uh, like data on 74 cars in this data set, right? So increase the sample size from 74 to something more like 100, 200, whatever. If that is possible, then it is generally observed that uh, increasing the sample size resolves the problem of multi coronary because uh, is a problem because uh, because of this the standard errors uh, increases more than usual or just standard errors uh, more than usual increase kar jate, right so what happens to the t ratio the t ratio becomes much smaller than usual and a significant result become insignificant, right? Yes. So therefore, if you increase the sample size, then uh, in that case, uh, the standard errors would become smaller and the problem of multi would be would not be there. But increasing the sample size may also not be uh, an appropriate option for that because you may not just go back and take further data. Uh, a third option we have, let me uh, tell you, but nowadays it is not that much recommended. Uh, that one is called ridge regression, right? R I D G E, ridge regression. Ridge regression, 
although we were not going to the mathematics of ridge regression, but I will just tell you the idea and I will tell you why this is uh, usually not preferred by researchers nowadays, okay? Ridge regression actually says that if you want to uh, control the problem of multicoordinarity, then ridge regression actually gives you an alternate estimator, right? Ridge regression gives you a framework in which the OLS estimators that you will get would, would not be unbiased, right? Uh, not be unbiased, any biased uh, on the average, they will not give you the parameter. But the theory of ridge regression actually ensures that if you fit the model by obtaining the estimators using the ridge regression methodology, then the corresponding variance of the ridge regression estimators would not be actually uh, the, uh, that much larger as compared to the usual OLS estimator. So ridge regression is a technique, but the biggest disadvantage is that this will actually, uh, sorry, this will actually give you bias estimators, right? Biased estimators. So, so this theory actually says that if bias is not that much an issue for you, if you can uh, trade off the, the problem of multicoordinality for biasness, so wo aap ye kehta hai ke, uh, fit a model in which the, the, the the OLS estimators that you get for the parameters would no more be unbiased, they would be biased, but the resulting standard errors would not be that much larger as compared to that one. So this is a particular uh, procedure hai, which is considered as one possible solution for multicoordinality. But as I said, uh, nowadays people say that, okay, it may control one problem, but because it will actually give us biased estimators, so why should we go for that one? So that's why there's not a preferred methodology. The third methodology that people nowadays use is what we call a PC regression, right? PC regression, which is con considered to be a much more reasonable way of uh, solving the problem of uh, multicoordinality. where PC, the word PC that you can see over here, stands for principal, P-A-L at the end, principal, and C stands for component, right? Principal component. And this technique actually comes from a particular statistical methodology that we call PCA, principal component analysis, right? Principal component analysis is a multivariate technique that we are going to uh, particularly uh, learn in our next semester. Uh, so principal component analysis is used on the highly collinear variables and the purpose of PCA, without going into the detail of that, PCA does just uh, a simple trick. It takes the highly collinear variables and combine them in the form of new uncorrelated variable. Yani, iska basic idea ye hai. Okay, for example, if you have, let's say, uh, variables x1, x2, x3, okay, and x4, let's say, just for the sake of example, suppose these are the four variables or four explanatory variables in our model, which are highly collinear, 
राइट right? जिस तरह अभी हमने वेट और लेंथ डिटरमिन किया ना सो पी सी ए इज एक्चुअली प्रोसीजर इट से टेक द डेटा ऑन दीज ओरिजिनल हाईली कोरियर वेरिएबल्स एंड अप्लाई अ मैथड दैट वी कॉल द पी सी ए राइट अप्लाई अ मैथड दैट वी कॉल द पी सी ए राइट विच हैज सर्टन एल्गोरिदम एंड for example get a new variable y1 combine these four variables in the form of for example uh, let's say a1 x1 plus a2 x2 okay plus a3 x3 and plus a4 x4 plus a4 sorry x4 which means that this new variable that we have denoted by y1 or by any other symbol this new variable is basically a weighted sum of the actual variables okay actual explanatory variables which were highly correlated uh, just for the sake of example i have taken only four so it takes it it says take these original four variables and apply a technique that we call the pca okay this is a sort of transformation and combine these four variables or the data on these four variables in such a way that from these four variables you get one new variables and how that new variables is obtained it is obtained like this right where a1 a2 a3 and a4 these are constants to be determined by the technique of pca these will be some constant some weights uh, associated with each of these variables and these weights will be actually determined by 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 pca and assigning weights to each of the variables according to their relative importance uh, using the technique and combining these two these four variables in this way right later on we call this thing as linear combination this will be a terminology that i would be uh, explaining in detail in the next semester like linear combination but for the time being you can call it a weighted sum because a1 a2 a3 a4 are weights which are determined by the technique and x1 x2 x3 x4 are the actual variables and using this weighted sum or what we would later on call linear combination we define in a sense you are uh combining information on four variables into one single variable right and then the idea is that in the original regression model in the original regression model replace the highly collinear variables x1 x2 x3 x4 by this new variable y1 right this new variable which is obtained as a result of this technique that we call pca this new variable is actually 